at RFVM. Knowledge generating research is very important for us to maintain our scientific authority for informing policy and regulations. And inhalation toxicology is that special expertise that we have here where we do uh, experimental innovative research. We have mobile facilities where we can do measurements and exposures that allow us also to collaborate with partners outside the RFVM. And that has resulted also in high impact papers and very uh, strong advice for policy makers. RFM is a leading authority in air pollution and other material toxicology. We advise international bodies like the World Health Organization, the European Commission and OECD. And in the Netherlands, when it comes to policy advice, we have a strong link to the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. They use the results of our research to develop policy and for us to provide good advice, it's very important that we integrate our knowledge on inhalation toxicology with environmental epidemiology and exposure assessments. Almost 25% of the fine dust emissions in the Netherlands comes from wood burning caused by residential heating and wood smoke contains uh, particles such as fine dust and soot, but also gases such as NOx. And these components can affect health, for example, the shortness of breath. At RVM, we look at the toxicity of wood smoke and try to estimate the effect of wood smoke on public health. To investigate the effects of wood smoke, we take a small fraction of the, of the wood smoke uh, and we dilute it with compressed air in this diluter. For that we measure particle size and concentration, as well as concentration of several gases, such as NOx and volatile organic compounds. From this buffer chamber, cells are exposed to the diluted wood smoke, and we measure, uh, for instance, cell viability and cell damage in the exposed lung cells. What we try to investigate now is how the lung cells react in optimal burning conditions. But in the second phase, we also want to know how the cells respond to suboptimal burning conditions, for example, using different types of wood. And all this information is used to try to better estimate the effect of wood burning on public health in the Netherlands. Here we are devising a strategy to evaluate effects of advanced materials on the lung. When the aerosol is generated, so the particles are in the air, they are uh, of course characterized and after that they are led to an air-liquid interface. An air-liquid interface is a single cell layer of lung epithelial cells by exposing uh, through the air that is most similar to the situation where humans are exposed. The bottom side, the medium, is used for nourishment, moist and for pH. And eventually we can use in our project to evaluate the effects of the different uh, advanced materials on the lung. Exposure to air pollution has long been linked to adverse health effects like respiratory disease, heart disease, emissions released by traffic, uh, exhaust, tailpipe emissions, uh, non-exhaust emissions like brake wear, tire wear, an important challenge is that, in general, the concentration of these particles uh, in ambient air is quite low. In that case, we can use a device like, uh, like this. It's called FASES. Uh, it was originally developed by the University of Southern California, further optimized in our lab. It allows us to uh, concentrate uh, the particles in the aerosol up to 20-fold uh, uh, levels and it also allows us to separate uh, different size fractions of uh, particles in the aerosols here. We can then use the output of the uh, VASES system for direct exposure of cells using this uh, device over here, which is called Automated Exposure Station, uh, developed by VitroCell. And there we can expose, uh, for instance, lung cells or other cell types uh, by a liquid interface exposure, where we investigate the toxicity of this aerosol. We know that airborne particles can have an effect on our health, but different sources may produce similar amounts of mass, but have differences in reactivity. So if your particles are small enough to reach your deeper lungs, they will uh, encounter a layer of cells. 
That layer of cells is encapsulated in lipids, and those lipids, they protect the cells. And when this happens in a longer, prolonged period, we think that this in the end leads to severe effects we see in when people have lung diseases. So here at the FVM, we try to go closer to the reaction that really happens in your lungs. So we have an essay, and it's a stepwise essay, in which we try to collect the lipids that are really in your lungs, with uh, various reactions in the end quantify what happens and then link to the uh, reactivity of various sources like uh, tire wear, combustion, microplastics and hopefully in the end helps people that are most susceptible for them like people with asthma, smaller children um, and people with lung disease. So now we are expanding our focus from air pollution to uh, emerging issues like microplastics or advanced nanomaterials, or even the combination between air pollution like NO2 and microorganisms. On top of that, we're moving from the traditional inhalation animal experiments to human studies and advanced methodologies on in vitro methods. And we complement that also with modeling, explaining what the human relevance is. As a team, we provide expertise, both at the national and international level, based on knowledge-generated research and a well-developed network. We can advise policymakers and regulators worldwide, uh, considering all aspects of inhalation toxicology.